The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to the October 20th, a terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, D.B. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. Now, I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that is that I'm here to serve you during this next 53 minutes. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it early. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices trading the upside, with one exception. That's the Dow Trannies. They're down 47 points. The Dow Cash Index is up 1% or 309 points. The S&P is up 8 tenths or 30 points. 1 to 3 tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 147 points. A little less than 1% for the Russell. That's 16 points. Semi's up 3.5. That's 3.5%. Uh, that's 77 points to the upside. Gold is up 15 bucks. Silver's up 55 cents. Slice Recruit crude is up $1. sixty-two. Natural gas is up a nickel. We're going to take a look at that here in the morning. Morning. Uh, 30 year treasuries down 16 ticks. 121.13 is the print. Now, leading the charge to the upside, dollar wise, is Booking Holdings. 41 bucks, two and three tenths. Lamb Research, 34 bucks, 10 percent. Mercado Libre up 25 bucks or 3 percent. Azimil Holdings, 23 bucks, 5 percent. Elevance Health up 4 percent, 21 buckaroonies. To the downside, it's WD40. That's off 15 bucks, 9 percent. All states down 15 percent or 11 bucks. Watsco is down uh, nine bucks or three and a half percent. Uh, Union Pacific Corp down eight bucks, four percent. Tesla's off eight bucks or three and eight tenths percent. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin by taking a look at the markets. First thing we need to go do is take a look at the market breadth, the TAS market breadth out here. So we'll start with, well, I don't know what we'll start with. We will start with the NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ 100 right now as we speak, we've got uh, for the 62.40, the daily are all in bullish configuration. So if we take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart, if you look over in the left-hand side, you'll see 60 instruments trading above the top of profile, 21 below. That says on a 60-minute basis, the rally should continue out there unless we're hitting some type of profile resistance, which I don't believe that we are. The four-hour time frame, let's take a look at that. That's the next uh, uh, level up that we can look at. And here you've got 48 instruments above the top. And you've got uh, 30, uh, 17 instruments below the bottom of profile. So, again, you have a bullish crossover. The daily time frame, what we have is 29 instruments above, 10 instruments below. So, again, these are bullish market breadth conditions, and they suggest that we should see a further rally. So that was the NQ. Let's go take a look at the NQ charts and see what uh, piece of information we need. We're going to change our screens momentarily. We will be at some white background screens. Those are my Ninja Trader charts out here. And the top one, upper left, is the daily time frame. On a daily basis, you can see that price right now is trading above the top of its profile. Profile is where you've got sellers at. That's at 11,231, a key area. As you look at the five-hour time frame chart at 11,300, really it's 11,299 and change, we'll call it 11,300, is where it's got resistance. So price is trading right. That's the only resistance that I see right now as I take a look at these charts that go from a 10, 15, 30, 60, a two-hour, four-hour, five-hour, and then the daily time frame. The resistance level is the profile on the five-hour time frame chart. Now, this current candle does not close till 2 p.m., 
Uh, and it's only 11 right now, so hard to say where this will be. But what we can say is if we take a look at the uh, 240 and the 120 minute chart, both have very clear TD9 count tops out here. So let's just take a look at the uh, 240 minute chart. So the key level to be watching today on a further rally is going to be the high of that pattern. The high of that pattern for both uh, time frames, whether it's the 240 or the two hour chart, is 11, 431.75. If price closes above 11, 431.75 on a two hour or four hour time frame chart, that negates that signal, tells us we're going higher. Its next battle would be at 11,670 and a quarter. If price could take out 11,670 and a quarter, then we continue to move higher with the next battle on a four hour time frame being 12, 140.50. On the NQ uh, 120 minute time frame chart, <coughs> its battleground above. It's TD9 count high. It's at 11.544, and then you have one at 11.645. So those would be the battles. But really, the first battle right now has to be that TD9 count top. And again, the key level there is going to be 11.431.75. That's what price needs to close above to suggest that uh, the NQ is in rally mode. Now let's take a look at the ES Mini. We'll get these charts here fired up. While these are populating, I'm going to shift screens again. We'll go take a look at what the TAS market breadth for the S&P 500 looks like. So now let's pull that over. We'll switch uh, from the NQ to the uh, S&P 500, the ES Mini out here. And let's go see what we've got here. Market breadth. So this is interesting. Market breadth, as we speak right now, for the 60-minute time frame for the S&P 500 is uh, slightly uh, bearish. Slightly bearish. You've got 126 above the top, 153 below the bottom. On a 240-minute basis, let's go take a look at what that's got going on. That's 123 above, 166 below. So it's just the daily time frame as we speak right now that has that bullish crossover. And on a daily time, a daily basis, what we have is 156 instruments trading above profile, 66 below. So this is what's really leading to our choppy market here. We don't have any consistency with regard to market breadth. Uh, but let's go take a look at the ES mini charts. The ES mini, the level to be watching, and it's a TD9 count top for both, again, the four-hour and the two-hour time frame. And that high uh, is going to be, and this is what you're looking for, for price to close above. So forget market. Forget, uh, uh, oops, let me see here. Go live. Uh, forget uh, forget uh, the uh, TAS market, but we're not going to forget it. Here we take a look at a four-hour time frame chart. What we can see is price is trading up into resistance. It's a bearish structured profile area. That's between 37.53 and 37.69. But even if price closes above that, it needs to close above the high of uh, 37.66 and a quarter. Let me make sure that was correct. 37, I was wrong. 37.77 and a quarter. If price closes above that, well, then it's got another battle. So, so you've got really three battles right here. 37.53, 37, four battles, 37.69, 37.77, and then 38.15. It's the 38.15 level that the ES Mini on a four-hour time frame needs to clear to suggest that it is rally on, that it is game on. On a two-hour time frame chart, the resistance level is uh, really 37.70.50, but it's at TD9 count high. We've already taken a look at that. Price here on a two-hour time frame trading right into resistance. That's the top of its current profile. So that's what's going on in the ES and the NQ world out there. We get back from this break, we're going to take a look at Adobe for Alton, natural gas for Coda, and uh, somebody else inside the Tiger's Den had mentioned that, and uh, ticker symbol BNOM for Coda as well. Of course, I would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got the charts for Adobe up on our screen out here. Alton uh, is uh, wanting us to take a look at this. Is a uh, question. Uh, good morning, Steve. Finally, great weather in Florida. Yeah, yesterday was not so great. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of rain on the golf course. I hope you are enjoying it. If you, I am, well, I am, except for yesterday. If you have time, please look at Adobe. Good fundamentals, making money hand over fish. Yet the stock has been killed over the last year. Stock price has already visited the 2020 lows. Buy, hold, or sell looking at the longer term horizon. So buy, hold, or sell. Well, here's what we know on a daily time frame, Adobe completed a, uh, a uh, buy the D point pattern. It, it was more than a one to one, probably 1.272 C to D expansion. The reason why I say it was completed was because of the bullish reversal candle that conformed on October the 3rd. That's a bear sash candle. What that does is that sets up your support level. If you were to take a long position, that sets up your support level at the uh, low of the prior day, which is uh, 274.85. So first note that if price were to close below that, that would be suggestive of a market that wants to continue to move lower. Now, if you're looking for a long-term position, which you said you were, now is not the time to buy. The reason is because price has made its way up to resistance. That's the top of its daily profile out here. And that's right up at the uh, level of 308.31. We're right now at 307.98. Now, I don't know whether price is going to be able to close above that. If it does, that would be a, a short-term positive. And at the same time, we also have the weekly chart that is trading right up into. So this has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. This is where market is stretched. You then get a confirmation with a, a bullish reversal candle that took place on October the 7th. There was a bull sash candle out there. And that then, when you get a bottom pattern, the first thing that price will do is move up towards its oscillator and change. And on a daily basis out here, price was already above that the oscillator and change line, but on the weekly base, that is not the case. So price trading into resistance here in Adobe, top of the daily profile, weekly oscillator and change line. If price can close above the top of that daily profile, and again, that number was 308.31, uh, if price can close above that, then you're going to make a move to 318 and a quarter. 318 and a quarter is the top of its weekly profile. It's really that level there, Alton, that I think that price would need to close above. And then what you'd be looking to do is to buy some type of retracement, hopefully a low volume retracement out there. Now, the monthly time frame last month confirmed a TD9 count bottom. So to review Adobe, 
you have a monthly bottom pattern, you have a weekly confirmed bottom pattern, you have a daily confirmed bottom pattern. So now what we're really doing here is dealing with resistance levels. And I don't know whether those resistance levels will fail or not. I can share with you that on the way down, that big gap, you see that, that big falling window. Now that had 27 million shares out there. And there's a lot of people who might be, well, I don't know what they're saying, but 27 million shares. Hey, today you're moving up into that area with 1.3 million shares. So there's going to be a lot of, um, well, this is where if I'm flying the plane, I'm telling you to be careful because those uh, oxygen uh, uh, masks might fall down and you might need to put that on. So uh, it's looking good. But now you got the battle at resistance, so you don't want to buy resistance out here. If it does get above resistance, then you'd be looking for some type of pullback or retracement out there. So I hope that helps you all, Alton, with regard to uh, Adobe. And uh, thanks so much for the request. The next request coming in from really several people out there. Uh, you've got Coda. I got Brent in Martinez, California, Alan in the uh, Tiger's Den, all looking to get some type of feel for natural gas and what that is doing out here. Uh, in uh, Brent's case, he took a long position in UNG this morning with call options. Um, so that's fine. So let's go. Uh, and Cody wanted me to rip the charts apart here for, uh, oh, that's not uh, natural gas. Let me switch over to natural gas. Sorry about that. Uh Pay attention, Stevie. Pay attention. Now we got the natural gas chart. So on a monthly basis, so bigger picture out here, Roadsmith indicator, top. Price is below its green oscillator and change line. Back inside its monthly profile, this suggests that natural gas could be targeting the 423 to 484 level. Could be. But right now, the chart for natural gas says it wants lower price. The weekly chart for natural gas is in bar number seven. We know that's not a bottom. Uh, and price is taken on a prior swing point. That's the swing point from back on July the 8th. Uh, price is trading into that uh, candle. So price may be targeting the bottom of that candle, which is 5.599. We're at 590 right now. So that's what the weekly chart. Now, if price closes below 599, what this is suggesting is we'll pull back to its breakout level. Its breakout area is $4.45. Again, I'm looking at the December contract. I have not looked inside of UNG to see which contract or contracts natural gas is um, is trading on. Maybe uh, Coda or Alan, you guys can look that up while I'm uh, reviewing these charts here and let me know. But that's important. We're looking, though, specifically at the December contract. I suspect there's probably a little bit of November left inside of UNG, and the rest of it would be the uh, December contract out here. If we look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame has an A to B equals CD pattern. That has not completed. Why is it not? Well, it actually completed back here. Give me a moment. I don't want that tool. I want this tool. So we had an A to B equal CD confirmation when this bull sash candle formed back on October 4th. That led to a two-day rally. Price really never got above that uh, oscillator and change line. Did not get above it for two consecutive sessions out here. And that's telling you that there's trouble in River City. That pattern, that by the D point pattern, was negated on the trading day of uh, October 17th when price closed below the support of that bull sash candle. Now we can see here as prices pulled back, I'll just simply expand out this chart for you. Prices pulled back to its breakout level, $5.72, or very close. No, I guess it's gotten down there. Is that a bottom? It can be a bottom. We don't have a bottom pattern. The preference would be to see some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm the A to B equals CD pattern. So you're back to an area of support, but it's still a risky trade, knowing that the weekly is saying, hey, I want lower price, and the monthly is saying, I want lower price. Now to the intraday charts. The 30-minute time frame formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom. It did that with this nice hammer candle that formed at 9.30 this morning. What price is doing right now is it's uh, trading above the top of a 30-minute profile. Now it suggests that price would want to go target its TD9 count breakdown area. That's at $6.04. So the 30-minute chart on an intraday basis says it wants to move higher. The 60-minute time frame chart also has a road momentum indicator bottom. That confirmed as we came on the air at 11 o'clock when we, this formed a bullish engulfing candle. Price here is also above the top of its 60-minute profile, and that suggests a run back to its TD9 count high. So this is helpful to us because on a 60-minute basis, if price is able to close above six dollars and four cents, 6.044 to be exact, that's going to suggest that uh, we see higher price with six dollars and 27 cents being the target. The 120-minute time frame, this bar will not complete until I think it's noon. It is noon, so you got another uh, 35 minutes. 
Uh, but uh, if price can, price is, uh, so I'm a, well, I got 35 minutes. If it forms a bullish uh, reversal candle and it's it with inside the profiles, then it's got a battle at $5.99 and $6.06. .06. Above that, it would be signaling to move to six twenty seven. So there's potential with regard to the bottom. Remember, we really want that bottom pattern to show up on the daily time frame, and that would be a bullish reversal candle. On a 240-minute chart, and this candle here will not complete until... 2 p.m. So too too early to call on this one, but it's negated. This is the 240 minute chart. It negated a TD nine count bottom pattern out there, and so the only thing that would be present would be a uh, buy the D point. Maybe there's a three drive to a bottom. It needs this bullish reversal candle. It needs to close above that red oscillator change line, but then it'll have a a, uh, a battle at six dollars and thirteen cents, and then above that six fifty three. That was a 240 minute time frame chart. The five-hour chart needs a bullish reversal candle here as well, and really a close above that oscillator and change line. We'll finish looking at natural gas when we get back from the spring. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So uh, it is a December contract that is inside the UNG, so that's good. You know, and Alan uh, wrote in a good question here. He says, uh, Steve, it's amazing. Of all the gas shortages... And the price is down. He's referring to natural gas. Uh, and the price is down that low. Please explain. So you're asking me, Alan, a fundamental question out here. Not a technical question, but really I, I consider it to be a fundamental question. And that is what really got me into doing technical analysis was questions like that. Because what I've learned is the most fundamental element of any analysis of a company is what are buyers and sellers doing 
It's not what the CEO says. It's not what we read in the newspapers or what have you. It's really what our buyers and sellers are doing out there. And so in the case of natural gas, on a monthly basis, those buyers and sellers are saying, I want lower price. The weekly chart, sellers are saying, I want lower price. The daily chart saying right now, I want lower price, but I am back at a breakout area. And so because of the intraday signals, the roads momentum indicator signals that we have, and some of those charts out there, um, price should be able to generate a bullish reversal candle today on a daily time frame. And then Brent and uh, uh, Alan, and uh, Coda, then I'd say, yeah, it's time to take a long trade in natural gas. In looking at these charts here, if you look at the five hour time frame chart and the four hour time frame chart, the two in the bottom right out there, what you'll see is that uh, price has really struggled for the last uh, almost 10 days out here to close above that red oscillator and change line. On a five hour time frame, that number, as we speak right now, is up at $5.97. I would say that you want to see a close above that, really two closes above that, to then suggest that maybe the bottom is in for natural gas. But just be careful here. The daily is not so not so certain about that. Um, so I do hope that helps you out with regard to natural gas. I'm keeping my eyes on it as well uh, to uh, possibly take subscribers along. So we're all in the right space. We're just not getting the right signal. At least I'm not seeing the right signal as we speak right now. So I hope that helps you out. Brent Allen. And uh, and uh, Coda. Coda also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol VNOM. So let's get back to our three paned charts out here, daily, weekly, and monthly. And let's go put in VNOM. Let this uh, populate. Did I spell that correctly? I did. That's four letters. Uh, that's uh, got an A plus on uh, spelling there. So you, you got to love that. Now, of course, I'm just a little little uh, strategic pause here while I wait for the uh, charts to uh, pop up. But VNOM is uh, populating right now and is trading above the top of its daily profile and trying to take out a TD9 count top out there. So this is a Viper Energy. So Coda, you can see the TD9 count top that formed on the trading day of October 10th. That led to a pullback to support, support in this case here being its green oscillator and change line. That test and rejection back on October 14th and 15th was a bullish signal. That sent it to really a neutral status. The reason is because it had a valid top out there. Now, if price can close above that TD9 count top, that is at 33.35, then this should continue to rally. Continue to rally to where? Well, 35.11. Is a TD9 count breakdown area. So that would be the next area of resistance. And then this has another TD9 count top. And that was formed on the trading day of June the 7th. And that high out there is at, no, that can't be right. Uh, that high is, uh, no, it is right, 35.59. So 35, so those would be your battlegrounds here. So right now, the TD9 count that formed out here on the trading day of October 10th, that's done its magic. It's held that resistance level. You still have a neutral signal because price is above the top of the profile, above its green oscillator and change line with a topping pattern. So that's the daily time frame. The weekly time frame, price is above profile, price is above the green oscillator and change line. That's confirming what we just looked at on the daily time frame, which is suggesting that it wants to continue to move higher. Now, the swing point on the weekly basis is that swing that began June 6, which had volume of 1.95 million shares. This week so far, you're at 1.3. We're through Thursday. So it looks like it's, um, you know, let's see, what did yesterday do volume-wise? Yesterday was uh, 700,000. The day before was 293,000. It seems like we're coming in short. That doesn't mean it's not good. It doesn't, what it's telling us is it's not ready to take out those highs. It's not doing it with gusto. And then finally, we've got the uh, monthly time frame chart. The monthly time frame chart has a TD9 count top out there. It's got a probably a sell the D point top as well. Price is making its way back to uh, TD9 count breakdown resistance at 33.10. We know based upon the TD9 count top that was out here that really what needs to take place is price has to close above that big old bearish engulfing candle. That was June of 2022. Now that high out there is 35.85. So 35.85, that's going to be where the real work, where the rubber hits the uh, metal or the road, so to speak, out there. So Vena looks good, but uh, just doesn't have the volume at this stage here, but it should continue to move higher. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Coda, with regard to VNUM. If you need anything else on that, please let me know. The last question that I see at this moment is uh, coming in here from uh, coming in here from Hector. And Hector wants to take a look at UNP. So let's go put up the charts here for UNP. I believe that is trading lower. Was that trading lower this morning? Yeah, that's off about eight bucks and change. So the question goes like this. Steve-O, happy Thirsty Thursday. 
I'm on board with that for sure. UNP, United Pacific, ABC down on a weekly. We loaded up last week, getting ahead of a uh, buy the D point. We love the fact that this C to D leg much weaker than the A to B leg. As you teach, and we finished this week above 193.79, all aboard looking for a nice big bounce here. So let's go take a look at UNP and see what we see out here. First of all, so it's pulling back and it's pulled back to test a level of support, Hector, and that is the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. That formed about four or five days ago. So a key level of support that you're watching is that bottom, and that's at 191.87. We're trading at 191.52, so we're trading just below that. If, in fact, Union Pacific closes below the bottom of that daily profile today, what it does is it increases the odds that price will pull back and test uh, uh, that uh, swing point, that bullish engulfing candle that uh, formed out here and created that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, the volume on that candle session, that uh, bullish engulfing candle, was 3.4 million shares. Today, two hours into trading, we're already at about 2 million shares. We're at one point. 1.91, we're going to call it two. So you're moving into that swing point with volume. I don't know if price will close below the bottom of that bullish structure profile. So this is where buyers should be able to step in and support it. But if they don't, which means a close below 191.87, and knowing you're coming down to that with volume, looks to me like this wants to continue to head lower. So that's the first thing that I would look at. On a weekly time frame, you were talking about an A to B equals CD pattern. Well, this would be an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And we'll go draw that in on my other screen out there. It'll be much easier for us to take a look at. On this screen, though, what we want to point out is there is no bottom signal. You're in bar number eight right now. But in order for a TD9 count on a weekly basis to form, price is going to have to get below last week's low. It doesn't have to do it this week. It just needs to be able to do it between this week and the next two weeks out there. And on a monthly time frame, you're below profile. Uh, you're targeting 161.41 level. You're in bar number seven out there. So the question is, is the daily triggering is signaling to you and I that if this is the bottom, it's going to somehow take over for the weekly and the monthly charts out there. And that I don't know. So now let's go back and take a look at the uh, black background charts. Easier to draw in the A to B equals CD to the downside. We're going to focus in on the weekly time frame. So first of all, the B point is going to be the trading session from uh, July 11th. And that did 12.6 million shares. That was passed with 17 million shares uh, the week of September 26th. So this has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. The A point out here, very easy to identify. That's the high for the week that began March 28th. The B point, very easy to identify. That's the low from July 11th. The C point, also easy. Price getting right up into the top of that daily profile on the trading day of August 15th. One to one would take us to 70, uh, would take us to 165.79. But this is only a 50% retracement, Hector and Patty. This is suggesting lower price. Lower price, like 144.97. But first, the 165 area, which lines up with that monthly TD9 count breakout area of 161.41. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, watch today's profile and today's close for UNP. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. My apology, uh, folks. I had switched over to the black background screen. I thought I clicked all the buttons. I did not. But here's that uh, weekly. A to B confirmed. A to B equals CD to the downside for United Pacific. Again, 165.79 being its first target out there. 101.272 at 144.97. Uh, so we got some questions that have come in through the uh, Tiger's Den. Let's uh, get to uh, those. Uh, Inno Visual wanted to take a look at the uh, spot volatility. Next. You know what? Let me do this here. Let me get over to the uh, spot. Here is the uh, VIX right here. And uh, what we can see is that the uh, spot VIX index, so what, what you don't see out here is that uh, this trading day right here, October 13th, that confirmed a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator um, top out there. Uh, that's an RMI top. And uh, so that suggested that price should head lower, which it has done. So that top has held. Now, uh, what price should do is should target its 50-day exponential moving average. So the 50-day exponential moving average is at uh, price right now is at uh, 2838. Currently, spot fix is trading out at 2991. If that happens, if that occurs, then you should see the ES Mini and the S&P 500 to continue to move higher out there. Uh, as long as price remains above that 50-day, though, if there's any kind of surprise, it'll be to the downside. It won't be really a, a great surprise out there. So hope that helps you out with regard to that question. You know, I know you also wanted me to come back, take a look at the NQ as we go into the end of the show. So I will absolutely try to do that. The next question coming in from the uh, Tiger's Den. Um, geez, I, for I forgot to write down who. Whoops, that was wrong. Back. Ay, 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 screens. Um. McGuppy might have been the one asking. But yeah, McGuppy, I'm sorry. You were asking about skills, SKLZ out there, not referring to Stevie's skills, referring to the uh, stock chart, SKLZ. So we've got that up on our screen here. And a nice big, uh, so this had confirmed a Roseman to indicator bottom, and it did that on the trade day of October 13th. It did that when it generated that bullish engulfing candle. Bottoms, when we're looking at patterns, I'm not talking about non-patterns. So I don't use Japanese candlesticks just on a blank chart and say, oh, there's a bullish engulfing candle. That signals a buy. No, 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 no. The way that you really want to utilize Japanese candlestick charting, this, of course, my perspective out there is where it really has meaning is at the completion of a pattern. Maybe it's a buy the D point. Maybe it's a sell the D point. Maybe it's a Rosemont Dominicator top. Maybe it's an RMI bottom. Maybe it's a TD9 count top. Maybe it's a TD nine count bottom. Now those don't require the TD nine counts don't require a bullish or bearish reversal candle, but it is nice to have the cavalry let us know that they are on our side out there. So when it comes to skills, you got that bottom. Now what you're getting out here today, uh, uh, McGuppy, is prices trading above the top of its profile. That's at one buck. If it can close above one buck today, close above one buck tomorrow, uh, then that should continue higher, and that higher would be a buck twenty seven. Dollar twenty seven is the TD nine count breakdown area. 
There is a potential on a weekly basis. I mean, how do I do this? Uh, I do this by getting rid of a couple of the lines out there. So let me do this here. It'll make it a little bit easier for us. Let's change this here to just one line that we're showing. And now it should expand up. There we go. So on a weekly basis, what we can see is that you've got wave number seven. Uh, that will be confirmed this week with a higher low, which is what we have in place. You have a Rogeman indicator signal that's been triggered. Right now, we have a bull sash candle. Don't know what it will look like at the end of the day tomorrow, but if it is a bullish reversal candle, then you've got a confirmed weekly Rogeman indicator bottom, just like we had a confirmed daily Rogeman indicator bottom. Now, this has resistance battlegrounds at 107, 120, and 132, and I'm referring to the weekly time frame chart. So um, McGuppy price has to close above 132, um, which would then also be a close above that daily TD9 count breakdown area. And that would be the kind of bullish message that you're looking for. Uh, it shows that there's a potential for a TD9 count bottom. But in order for that to happen, price is going to have to close this week below a dollar one. Now, maybe it does that, too. And then you could potentially have uh, three bottoming signals on a weekly basis for skills out there. But it is a penny stock. It's a buck. It doesn't take much to push this around, so just be careful. But I'm providing to you the technical signals out there. And on a monthly time frame, this is going to complete a TD9 count bottom this month. Now, what that says is whatever this month's low is at the present time, this month's low is uh, 83 cents. If price were to close below 83 cents, that says going to zero. Now, it doesn't say it's going to zero. It says it's going lower. But how much lower can an 83 cents stock go? Well, it can go 83 cents lower. I'm not trying to be as smart, you know, I'm just, I guess I was. Sorry about that. In any event, so you got nice setup, potential nice setup on the monthly to match what's going on the daily. You might have a nice setup on the weekly. You've got some battles overhead. So that's what the charts for skills say. Your question was, is it time to uh, rake the downtrend? And you're getting signals that say, yeah, that might be the case out there. So I hope that helps you out, McGuppy. I know you also want to take a look at Tesla, T-S-L-A, specifically here, you were asking about long term. So let's get these charts here populated. And after Tesla, we're going to go for uh, De uh, Dennis wants to take a look at DV and DK. So we'll do that for him as well. Sorry that it's taking so long to populate. Now you've got it on a daily basis, even though you didn't ask for it, you've got a TD9 count bottom that formed out here several days ago. That was on the trading day of October the 14th. Price pulled back today, tested support as well as the bottom of that candle. That is held as long as price remains above the low from uh, the 14th. That low is a 204.16. You still have a TD9 count bottom. On a weekly basis, price is pulling back and testing TD9 count breakout support. You actually closed below that last week, but you're above, back above that this week. That's at 209.08. So the weekly chart is saying, eh. So what was the volume last week? Let me check the Tesla's volume. Last week, volume here was 397 million shares. That was taking out a swing point low. That at 465. Okay, so it was lighter volume. So we're not going to draw in a uh, A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. And on a monthly time frame, here what we've got, McGuppy, is price testing support, 205.54. So you've got a support level on the weekly that's being tested, seems to be holding. You've got a support level on the monthly being tested, seems to be holding. Daily, testing its TD9 count bottom, seems to be holding. Long term is what you asked for. Well, on a daily basis, I'd rather see the daily get above the top of its daily profile to then say, okay, that uh, bullish structure profile in the monthly time frame, that likely was the bottom after it had formed that Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. So one way to take it, if you're really looking to trade Tesla, you can go ahead and take a long position now, and you'd put a, a stop in with a close below that TD9 count bottom out there. And that's at the uh, 204.16 level. So hope that helps you out with regard to both um, skills and a Tesla. Now, Dennis, he wants to take a look at ticker symbol DV. And uh, DV is uh, Devin uh, Energy. Now, what is it? Uh, double. Oh, that's right. Double verify holdings out there. Now, double verify holdings, once these charts here get populated, you'll see that price is trade by the top of its daily and weekly profile. There is no monthly profile out here, just not enough data. So trade above profile and trade above an oscillator and change line, if, especially if it's green like it is on a daily basis, that is a bullish message. Now, the swing point that is trading into, Dennis, is all the way back on the trading session of September the 9th. And that did volume of 2.1 million shares. Let me pull this chart in just a tad, maybe make it a little bit easier for you right there. So September, on September the 9th, the volume out there at that high, 2.1 million shares. You tested that two weeks ago, two days ago, 
with 1.4 million shares. You're tested today, you're at 198,000 shares. That's going against 2 million shares. Doesn't look like it's really getting ready to take out that high. So you've got kind of a, um, I don't know, what's the sig? Somewhat neutral out here. And on a weekly basis, the swing point that is tested at 7 million shares, you're only at 3 million shares. So it looks positive, but it's not getting ready to explode and take out those highs. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Ta Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got a couple of requests. Let's get to them. DK out here. Um, this is uh, Dennis. This is trading above the top of its uh, green asset and change on a profile. This should go target its most recent high. That recent high from October 7th in about the 3087 to 2953 range out there. On a weekly basis, you have price consolidating with inside its profile. On a monthly basis, price trying to take out the top of that profile. It close above um, 28. 88 this month you traded 29 or 29 12 that would be a positive outcome satish wants to take a look at ticker symbol tcda so as we take a look at uh, this here i'll be pretty quick um monthly chart price trade above its profile that should continue higher it's got a nice td9 count bottom on a weekly time frame uh price is consolidating with inside its profile that's between the range of 991 to 1272 the daily time frame this had a uh, TD9 count top. Prices uh, got below yesterday, the bottom of its profile. Uh, that profile level is up at uh, 1057. You're trading below it. Looks like this wants to target 856 TCDA. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Satish, with regard to uh, that. Um, Dan had wanted to take a look at GSM. 
So I'll put that chart back up here for you, Dan, in case you didn't see it. But here's GSM. You're asking about the TD9 count pattern. Price needs to close below bar number five today. There is a prior TD9 count that's still in place out here. This has, uh, so this is holding. You do have a road momentum indicator signal that will complete today with a bull sash candle. You'd like to see a close above 532. It's oscillator and change line. That would then signal move up to 565 out there. Lastly, was the request to go take a look at the NQ as we closed out the show. So as we take a look at it right now, what do we see? Nothing has changed out here. In order for the NQ to say that this thing really wants to head higher, it needs to take out its TD9 count top. That price level is out. Of, oh, this is the ES Mini. Shoot. Sorry about that. Uh, well, it looks like Stevie screwed up. Not the uh, first time today, uh, but hopefully it's the last time out there. Um, InnoVisual. I'll go ahead and post these charts into the uh, Tiger's Den for you. and uh, But at least uh, with regard to the ES Mini, and I'm assuming for the NQ, not much has changed. Needs to take out those TD9 count tops that we talked about earlier. Folks, have a terrific Thursday. I'm uncertain if I'm going to be able to do a show tomorrow, but I'm going to try to do it between 8 and 9. Take care.